So if I had 100 YouTube subscribers in 2021, this is what I would do to grow. Meet Kenta. Kenta is a coaching student of mine and he really wants to grow a successful YouTube channel, but there's a problem. So far he's made 50 videos, but he feels like he hasn't figured out his format and he doesn't want to niche down. And because of this, he feels lost on how to grow on YouTube. Now I've been in Kenta's shoes before, you know, and it was not too long ago where I was also at a few hundred subscribers, no audience, no direction. But I told them these are the five things I would do to start growing these accounts and also still make content that you like and that you don't feel confined in. I think the worst thing as a content creator you could do is just make videos for the sake of getting views and then not get views and then feel really shit about it. Comment below if you've been there. So the first thing I would do, step number one, is shut the fuck up if you haven't made 100 videos yet. Now, of course, I didn't say this to Kenta like that. I just mean it's really important to focus on the content. Make 100 videos and don't even think about growing. I know this seems pretty counterintuitive, but here's why. When you first start a YouTube channel, the least of your worry should be subscribers. It should be producing consistent content and finding your voice. How awkward are you in your first video? Most people are super awkward. I was. Cue the footage. Focus. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. When you make 100 videos, you might not get more subscribers, but you get better on speaking, video ideas, and editing. And these are skills you need before you grow a channel. Stop thinking about growing a channel, but starting a channel. And starting means you have to take out the expectation. So I want to show you when I started YouTube. My, this is my first of 30 videos, right? See seven views, nothing, literally nothing. This is back in 2014. Well, this is my third YouTube channel. So to be fair, there's actually more videos than this. But <laughs> look at this, right? This is uh, every page is 30, right? So now we're at 60 videos, right? Yeah. Let's keep going. It's so random. Like it's literally like my weird, like teacher appreciation, like six, like the views are so weird. And the views are, by the way, they're only large because people watch my old videos. But at the time it was like 20 views, right? Yeah. It's so random. I don't think it was till my, this video, since so this is my 90th video. Yeah. Where I, I put out my first a million viewed video. In combination, I think that on this specific channel, 90 videos, I finally figured it out. So you're at 53, like you still have what, 40 videos, 30 videos to go. Like definitely, there's no point to structureize. I don't really mm. believe in one. I think that you're putting a lot of unnecessary pressure. I can tell you what I do, but I personally think that you just have to have fun with it. I, I genuinely yeah. think that you just gotta sacrifice two things. Okay. If you're okay with sacrificing people thinking you don't have your shit together. And yeah. two, low views. It's gonna make the next 30 videos a lot easier for you to learn technically the skills you want to learn and right. explore. The second tip I have is shortening the video. If you think 100 videos is very intimidating, stop thinking about making 10 minute movies, okay? Just think about making short videos, whether it's one minute, four minutes, three minutes. I think it's so important to get comfortable with short form content because there's a new feature on YouTube called YouTube Shorts that allows you to post short form videos that still gain enough views and traction as regular videos. Last month, I posted a YouTube Shorts around the Asian hate topic and it got the same amount of viewership for my regular videos, but it was shorter and easier to produce. The reason why shorts are important is because it saves you time, you can make more content and it gets you to a faster speed to hit those 100 videos. Now you might be wondering, how do I make a YouTube short? Well, just make a video under 60 seconds. Make sure you put the hashtag shorts in the title or description and that will get you to the search engine of YouTube shorts. And that's all. Three, the third thing I would do once you make enough videos, whether it's 50, 75 or 100, is evaluate the comment section. Once you make enough videos, you figure out your voice, being comfortable on camera, you post it consistently, for past maybe six months or more. Now I think it's important to evaluate the comment section, okay? Which videos do you notice get more comments? What are they saying? It's so important to shape the content with your audience because when you acknowledge people, whether it's shouting out someone in the comment section, which, shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. <laughs> For those who don't know, I've been shouting out you guys in the comments for four years and this created community around people commenting, right? So whether it's something like that or you actually turn a comment into a video because you answered those questions, it's so important to read your comment section, okay? So there's a couple things you can do. You can read the comment section and use it as feedback to make your next video, or you can shout out people in the actual video itself, whether it's a Q&A or some sort of comment winner jingle. Don't copy me though. 
this is how you build strong community and can grow from 100 subscribers to 1,000 because maybe two or three people shared your account and repetitively this grew your account. I actually have an example of this on TikTok. So I actually make surfing vlogs on TikTok that range from 10,000 views to a million views. And what I would do is I would look in the comment section to see what people had questions about about surfing. And I would answer each question in a video. And that was my content strategy. So people felt more inclined to shape the content with me. It's super crucial if you don't even have comments. You're like, Jade, what the fuck? I don't even have people commenting. Go to your Instagram comments, see what people are asking you, your DMs, your Twitter. You can source the questions from different platforms. And it's really important to, you know, in the beginning, if you don't have anyone commenting, to look at other creators to see what comments are they asking, right? If you're a cook and maybe you make videos similar to another chef that's more popular, take a look at their comment section see what they're asking and turn that into videos because now you have data that proves that people want a certain type of topic. So I would do this after you make a few videos so you can start to improve and make your content more unique based on viewer input. The fourth thing I would do if I was starting a YouTube channel in 2021 is get your thumbnail and title clean as fuck. Like I said, if you haven't made 100 videos, disregard this information. I'm telling you, when you make more videos, you just get better at speed and you feel less overwhelmed. And I really do think that titles and thumbnails are important, but it's not as important as being consistent. However, if you already match the stage, okay, you pass the vibe check. I use a tool called VidIQ, which is actually the sponsor of today's video. No joke. I think I found about VidIQ like two years ago and I installed it because my friend Ryan Trahan told me to use it. And it also not only helped me create better thumbnails and titles, but it helped me gain more views because the more people click on a video because of a good thumbnail gains more awareness equaling more subscribers. How do you use vidIQ you might ask? Well, it's a free tool you guys can check out. It's a browser extension that links right to your YouTube and it can give you the following tips. The first thing it does, it can give you keyword suggestions. It can give you suggestions on how to title your video. For example, it gives you suggestions on SEO right here. This month I'm honing on the creator economy. So it suggests me to make a video called what is the creator economy? So I might just do that. Secondly, it gives you results on the competitiveness of the keyword, right? So the word creator economy right now looks like it's high search and low competition, which is a great way for me to come in and make content. So if you're someone in the fashion or beauty industry, find keywords, titles, right? That enable you to have high search and low competition, which means you can stand out more and grow more subscribers. And the third thing, which is actually my favorite new tool, I haven't even used this till recently, but it helps so much, is using their thumbnail preview tool. So you know how you're like scrolling on YouTube and it says like suggested channels you should follow. And you look at the thumbnails before you click on it. Typically when I click on a video, I see if it's a creator I'm familiar with or if it's a topic I'm familiar with, right? For example, I watch a YouTuber called Cody Ko and he has these very like thumbnails, if you know what I mean. And when I realized there's other YouTuber named D'Angelo Wallace that had very similar like thumbnails of reaction, I watched that video because the thumbnail had a similar vibe to Cody Ko and that kind of greeted me as a suggested viewer. Now you wanna be in the suggested train on YouTube and you can use vidIQ to figure out how you can fit in it. So what I always do is I search up the video I wanna make and then I put the title and thumbnail I plan to make and see if it fits in the ecosystem, right? So if I'm making videos about how to grow on TikTok, I look at my competition slash other people making the same videos and see how can my thumbnail be similar or more a little bit better and more clickable. And you can use this generator tool to kind of preview back to back how it looks. And this is how I create engaging clickable thumbnails. Thumbnails are super important because when you think about it, when YouTube pushes your account, whether it's on SEO, which is search engine, or they push it on a suggested feed, you look at the thumbnail before you click, right? The video doesn't even matter unless there's a good title and thumbnail. So you guys can use vidIQ to grow your page. Go check out the link in my description. Okay, thank you vidIQ for sponsoring today's video. Okay, the fifth thing I would do if I was starting with no subscribers is harness your other social media platforms, okay? I know this is embarrassing, but my dad and mom were my first viewers on my channel. I know, my mom and dad watch my videos, including me. I think when I first started my first YouTube channel, I was my only viewer. Like, I, I watched my video four to five times. There's no shame in that. I think it's so important when you have a very, very small channel to harness your personal network. Now. Maybe you're not really flamboyant and you can talk to your friends to watch your videos because that feels a little weird. You know, people in high school watching your YouTube videos is straight out embarrassing. But maybe if you find another YouTube creator community that can watch your videos, give you feedback, it's super helpful. I will link below my creator community where you guys can join and network and meet other creators, hopefully to, to vibe with. But I remembered I literally had this group chat called Young Hustlers when I was 16 and it was 10 bros my marketing bros. Uh, I was the only girl there, but like we were talking about like videos we were making on YouTube and we would support each other. And it wasn't an engagement group. Like I just want to preface, it's not a motherfucking engagement group. It's literally a group of friends that support me. And for the longest time they would share my videos, shout me out, recreate my content, 
collab. It's so important to find your tribe, whether it's your mom and dad and they watch your videos. Every view counts or you find an actual group of people that you vibe with that can help you and nurture you. I will link below the create community. It's free to join. It's so important to find your crew, okay? Because those are the people that will help you grow. And even, even if you get 10 views per video, that's still a start. I just want to preface, I had seven years of YouTube before I had a single breakthrough of a thousand subscribers. Okay, I was stuck at 100 subscribers, 200, 250 for the longest time. If you want proof, Kitty Films a YouTube channel, 400 subscribers, right? So that was my first YouTube channel ever. And it's just so important to harness your crew. Growing a successful YouTube channel in 2021 is all about starting, getting consistent, using tools to get better and having a group to give you consistent feedback. If you do this over and over again and you make consistent content, you get tools that help you get search and discovery and then you have a consistent feedback loop okay there's no doubt you'd be growing i really do believe it and it might take you 10 years like me or one year or one month but stay patient stay motherfucking patient i love you guys darmination catch you guys in the next one comment below if you have any questions see see what i did there okay using my own tips i am a man of my word okay so comment below if you have any questions and i will turn those into videos i love you guys see you guys later